What's up, everybody? Riggs Reacts. Back with another reaction video. It's not a music reaction today. Today we're reacting to Shane Gills, the stand-up comedian. You've probably seen some of his clips on TikTok. I think he's cool with, like, uh, Theo Vaughn and Joe Rogan and all them. From what I've seen so far, he's pretty damn funny. <laughs> I saw his freaking Donald Trump impersonation. That was spot on. <laughs> his Donald Trump impersonations are freaking hilarious. Not gonna lie. But today we're gonna watch 20 minutes of Shane Gill's stand-up comedy. And I'm gonna let you know this right now. He better be as funny as I assume he is. Or I'm gonna be pissed. On granddad's clothes, I'm gonna be pissed. <laughs> yeah, dick. But without further ado, we're gonna hop straight into this motherfucking reaction video. Make sure to like. Let's freaking get into this, dude. <laughs> We're all adults. We all agree the Special Olympics is a good, it's a good program. It's great. I just feel like the guy who came up with it had to be like a real risk taker. <laughs> Some guy in a board meeting, like, I got an idea. We should be racing these motherfuckers. <laughs> like, what'd you say? Like, fucking uh, town over said they had the fastest ones. <laughs> so we settle it, you know? I'm not making fun of the Olympians. The concept is wild. It's a wild, like if your best friend invented the Special Olympics and told you about it first, you'd be like, don't ever tell anybody that. <laughs> Who the fuck were you gonna tell that to? What are you doing? Pole vault? <laughs> you can't do the cool moves you see in porn. Just do regular. You ever try them? You ever think you can? You ever try like cum in a girl's face? They're a lot less receptive in real life. That whole process is a fucking nightmare, dude. It's a disaster. It's just you. The girl you love is down there. You've been begging her for three months to try this. Finally, she's like, yeah, you can do it. You're like, yes. It's gonna be just like the videos I watch every day. That's my favorite part. Now you get to do it. You think it's gonna be awesome. It's not. It's just you up there, alone. It's cold. <laughs> she's just being nice. She's like, are you okay? Now you can feel it. You're like, all right, here it comes. This is gonna be awesome. She's gonna love this. And as soon as it hits him, they freeze. And then once it's on them, they like don't know how to move. You know what I mean? Like you ever put like socks on a cat? <laughs> and then you feel bad because the comes out of you and you realize what you've done. You feel terrible. You got to fucking pick her up off the ground. It's like the same energy as like when a toddler falls. You're like, come here, get up. You're all right. You're all right. You're all right. We'll never do it again. Uh, I've heard of astrology and belly button rings. I feel like those go the hand girls in hand. Still, yeah, they do. The girls, are you guys still getting belly button rings? I don't know. I haven't fucked a whore lately. I know I said retarded there a couple times. My bad on that. I'm not trying to give myself a pass on being able to use that word. But I will say, I don't know if you can tell by looking at me. I do have family members with Down syndrome. It almost got me up. But it nicked me, it nicked me. Bit of a day walker myself. <laughs> My Uncle Danny sneaks grilled cheese sandwiches into restaurants just in case they don't serve grilled cheese sandwiches. I don't know where he's getting these fucking things. It's the best. It's the best. You'll be out to dinner with him. You look across the table, you see him sneaking at grilled cheese. Just... Yo, where'd you get that cheese, Danny? His dad's with him. He's like, that fucker, he's been making them at night. I know he is. I'm not making them at night, Dad. And he'll look at you and be like, I'm making them at night. <laughs> my favorite part of the year was I, uh, I got to watch my dad watch the news. He's a Fox News guy. Fox News dad, that's a good fucking dad. Can you imagine if you had a fucking MSNBC dad? Some guy every night at dinner like, we need to start focusing on renewable energy. It's like, ew, dude, I didn't know dad was gay. Talking to me about solar panels like a fucking lady. He might have her straight as hell, dude. We fucking hate the environment. That's how straight we are. All we talk about is eating pussy and fracking. Like every Fox News dad, my dad watches Fox every night until he can't. They watch every night until they get so angry they have to go to bed. My dad will watch for like two hours and then out of nowhere he'll just stand up and be like, fucking Mr. Potato Heads, trans, I'm going to bed. This world's going to hell. <laughs> Fox News is basically black church for old white dudes. You know what I mean? Like literally everything they say, my dad just sits there like, mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, preach, Tucker. Once in a while he gets hit with the Holy Spirit while he's watching it. The Holy Ghost visits him. He's just like, oh, Lord, build a wall. Can I get a wall? White people used to be cool in America. The height of white people being cool was us going, we're like, man. That was as cool as we got. We're like, man, see? And then the day white people stopped being cool, 
It was Jackie Robinson's first game. You can look it up, dude. You can find it. You can find the radio call from that game online. You can hear the exact moment white people stop being cool. You can hear the announcers. They still got there like, man, welcome to Chicago where the White Sox take on the Brooklyn Dodgers. We all had cool white nicknames. Like up at the mound is old Curly. He's a 47 year old alcoholic. He's the greatest athlete alive. Runs a six second 40 yard dash. Fastest man alive, they say. Then it happened, dude. And Jackie came up to the plate. You can hear the announcers like, meh. <laughs> No way he can hit Curly's pitch. Here comes the pitch. Fuck, home run. All right. <laughs> Jackie hit the ball so hard he knocked that voice out of all the whites. Not one of us has talked like that since. Dude, one swing of the bat. We're like, Meh. <clears throat> All right, yeah, that comes pretty good. That was good. It's time for us to focus on computers. <laughs> Autistic kids, they're like cats. A little skittish. You're not sure if they like you at all. Down syndrome or dogs? They're the dogs, dude. You get home, you get home from somewhere, they're like, where the f*** have you been? Dude, I got so much to show you. This is gonna be the best day. Tell it, ask a Down syndrome kid, do you wanna go for a walk? I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, throw a ball. Throw a ball. I'll get on Twitter and the first tweet I see will be someone from back home that's just like, fucking Colin Kaepernick better stand up. <laughs> like this tweet if you support the police. Share it if you're not gay. All right, I'm fucking I'm gonna share it. <laughs> and then the next post is just one of my new woke white friends that's just like, I'm not racist. That's it. Every day for the last year, just a different white person popping up. Like, look at me. Look at this article I shared to my Instagram story. I'm not racist, right? Like, all right. <laughs> you sure? So I don't know if you know this, like, being racist isn't like a yes or no thing. You know what I mean? It's not like you have it or you don't have it. Like, being racist is more, it's like being hungry, you know? It's like, yeah, you're not right now. It's like, yeah, you're not hungry right now, but a cheeseburger could cut you off on the highway. We're hungry all day. <laughs> the cheeseburger's Jewish in that joke. No, no, I'm kidding. I do this thing. It's not a good thing, but whenever I'm dating a girl, I always talk shit on her exes. It's not a good look. Women don't respect it. Kind of makes me look like a bitch. I like it. I, <laughs> I can't stop doing it. And normally it's easy. Normally it's like, what's your ex do? He's a fucking substitute teacher. It's weird. He wants to hang out with kids. like, that bad. You know, I, like, this one's tough. This is a tough ex to make fun of. It's when I'm walking around the apartment all day, just <laughs> fucking Navy SEALs. The kind of pussies, if you really think about it, you know what I mean? Like using night vision, sneaking up on guys. That's a fucking coward's way to fight, dude. You know who's actually brave? Al-Qaeda. That takes courage and bravery. In pajamas, throwing rocks at tanks. Heroic shit, dude. Just you and your boys going out. In flip-flops, you're all gonna get fucked up. For real, though, it was my favorite speech I've ever seen a president give. It was the night the United States killed the leader of ISIS, Trump comes out of the situation room at like midnight and gives a press conference like he's giving a post-game NBA <laughs> just killed a guy press conference. He goes, Abu Bakar al-Baghdadi is dead. He died like a dog. And I'm like, <laughs> I didn't change one word of that. That's what he opened with. And then he did 40 minutes. The speech is 40 minutes for no reason. It wasn't a prepared speech. He freestyled 40 straight. Not even a speech, just mean shit talk for 40... The meanest shit talk you've ever heard in front of the whole world. Abu. We could hear him crying, I said. Abu, don't cry. Abu. Let me tell you something. Abu cried. He cried quite a bit. I wouldn't have cried. <laughs> cry baby back daddy. That's what we were all calling. <laughs> like, as big as racism is in America, football. <laughs> There's a Disney movie, Remember the Titans, dedicated to what I just told you. The whole point of that, dude, that was one high school football season. Remember the Titans was like, it was eight weeks. That whole town went from like centuries of like, don't let them in our school, to just like, oh shit, the high school team's 4-0. Those are my brothers. <laughs> the point I'm trying to make is if you want to get rights in America, you just got to put together a good football team. You know what I mean? If the transgenders got together, and put together just a fucking hard nose, run it down your throat ball club. If the trans is just three yards in a cloud of dust of transgenders. If the trans, if the trans community could just somehow upset Alabama, everybody down there tomorrow would be like, those are some tough bitches, actually. <laughs> I, 
Anytime I go to another country, as soon as I get out of the airport and start like driving around, I'm just like, dude, this is your fucking country, dude. Other countries suck. Dude. America is number one. Dude. It's, not even fun. it's official. I've been to like three other countries. It's official. The other countries hate it too. They hate that we're number one. You ever tell them? You ever go to another country and tell them we're number one? Swim up to like a pool bar, just you know we're number one. They hate it, dude. They try to bring up bullshit to bring us down. They're like, what about all the mass shootings you guys have all the time? It's like, at least we're not gay. <laughs> you know? So there's really not a good comeback to that, because it's a pretty serious problem. And we're the only country doing that. We're not making any adjustments. <laughs> <laughs> what, are we going to give up our guns like a bunch of fucking gay guys? Yeah, right, dude. No, we're just going to have shootings all the time yeah <laughs> australian accents one of those accents that's funny every single time you could be in the middle of a fucking tragedy if you heard an australian accent you'd still be like <laughs> like if there was like an australian guy in the office on 9-11 was, was like, oh fuck look out <laughs> like, oh no there's another one get down oh fuck it's hot up here you're gonna have to jump out no <laughs> I was thinking so about the first time like man. Congress had to come up with age of consent. That had to be like the powdered wigs and stuff. That had to be a rough day for the fellas. It's like some guy coming up first, like from Rhode Island, 12. And everyone's like, ew, ew. No, dude. I, I don't know. Why do I have to go first on this one? It's like the hardest one to go first on. Sexually, I have, to, I have to follow a fucking Navy SEAL. They never quit until the job's done, dude. That's their whole thing. I quit a lot, all right? <laughs> the job's done when I'm tired, which is usually pretty early into the mission. <laughs> My arms start shaking pretty early. They give out. Next thing you know, we're having belly-to-belly -belly missionary. <laughs> Just hunched over, breathing in her ear like a pug for five minutes. <laughs> Just coughing. Coughing during sex is funny. Just missionary dude don't fucking i saw this crowd dude i see you boy lot of belly belly tonight dude this guy's hunched over just... you don't even think about that noise you're making in that poor woman's ear every woman in this room has heard that noise you've never thought the only way i can describe it is like you ever lay down and a dog starts sniffing your ear that's what it sounds like every just <laughs> the scarier forever dude throughout history think of any army throughout history imagine them gay gay nazis just when you thought those guys couldn't look any sharper they <laughs> gay vikings gay vikings dude you're just some villager looking out on the shoreline see a bunch of viking longships coming you're like oh no it's the vikings they're gonna rape our wives and daughters then they pull up their fucking rainbow flag on their boat and just like, oh fuck <laughs> My roommate, his girlfriend played college volleyball. So, wrong. so I'm very excited to like shit on volleyball whenever I can. So I get in there and I was like, yo, volleyball is fucking, that's a weird culture. Get them fucking shorts. Get them gym shorts. Dude. The shorts they're wearing is gross. And she was like, no, we need those shorts for speed on the court. And I was like, uh, I, I know that's not true. I watched the NBA. <laughs> None of you are moving as fast as, like, a ref. And those guys are wearing, like, slacks and dress shoes for some reason. She was like, no, we need those shorts. The tight shorts, they're essential. She compared them to, like, a helmet in football. I was like, I know they're not essential because I Googled the, uh, the Special Olympics volleyball team. All of a sudden, those shorts weren't so essential for them. What's that about? How baggy do you think they're? They look like the fucking and one mixtape out there. Offensively baggy is how I would describe all of their attires. I'm not discounting the fact it's hard for families. It is. I've witnessed it firsthand. It's difficult. It's very scary at first. Then you quickly realize that's easily the only good family member we have. That's the only good person I know. They're the bros, dude. They're the perfect bro. They love two things, dude. They love John Cena. Across the board, dude. You see one of these dudes out in public, hit him with a... <laughs> <laughs> they're going 
gonna give it back. They love it. And they love tits. Dudes with Down syndrome love tits, and it's a very uncomfortable truth for a lot of people. And I'm not sure why. Tits rule. John Cena rules. It's kind of the two coolest things. <laughs> this joke's probably not gonna make it, but <laughs> All right, here's this one out. Dudes with Down syndrome love women so much. I've never been a believer of being gay is a choice, but I will say every dude I know that can't think fucking loves pussy. <laughs> Yes, I, say, I don't care if they arrest him. If he loses the primary, let him debate, dude. If he gets arrested, Hannibal Lecter him out to the fuck. Here's my idea. Final debate of the year. I have one Republican candidate, one Democrat. You're like, all right, fellas. Surprise third guest tonight. Fucking stone cold music. The glass shatters. He walks out. They're both gay. <laughs> I think it is actually important to see how the candidates handle that type of pressure of debating with Trump. Every debate, he just bullied whoever was up there. The only one who did pretty good in the debates against him was Biden, just because he had no fucking idea what was being said, <laughs> which actually helped him. That worked out for him. Because Trump's whole thing is he tries to get in the other guy's head. Can't get in Joe's head. <laughs> Joe's not in there. Good luck, dude. Biden is Trump's kryptonite in a debate. Trump tries to drag the other guy into like a shit talking contest. He can't get Biden. He, every debate he's trying so hard, and Biden is just. <laughs> he tries. He just. You're a loser. Your son did crack. Biden's just. <laughs> what? <laughs> He's not right there, dude. That's actually a pretty good comeback. You might win this thing. Every year, Hooters would sponsor our one basketball tournament. All right? So every year, Hooters would bring like three or four waitresses and they would present like a big cardboard check donation to the Special Olympics. As soon as the girls entered the gym, the game changed <laughs> entirely, dude. It went from like hugs and sportsmanship to just like dudes got competitive, like very competitive, <laughs> fucking ripping down rebounds, just hitting layups. And, <laughs> <laughs> and then at the end of the game, there'd be a hug line between the waitresses and the players. And yeah, that went about exactly, exactly how you would imagine that went. We had to break out the fucking jaws of life, dude. My boy's a rag doll in those young sluts. <laughs> and I'm not knocking the, the, the players. They were totally in the right. The girls were hot. The waitresses, like every year I would sneak into the hug line myself. That's the thing about these countries. I was just in England, Scotland, Ireland, Australia. No black people. And I know what you're thinking. No. <laughs> no, you need black people. You need black people to keep the whites in check. The last thing you want is a whole island of whites that think they're the coolest people on earth. It's a disaster. That's how you end up with Conor McGregor's walking around like, ah, -da 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 -da. <laughs> like shut up, dude. The foreign whites are out of control. Dude. American whites, we're humble. We know we're not the coolest guys around. It's the foreign whites, dude. Yes. Is there yes. yes. <laughs> Preach, brother. <laughs> For real though, there's a reason every good NBA player that's white is from another country. The audacity to think you could play in that league, dude. <laughs> Fucking arrogance. Every white dude in America saw a black kid dunk in like eighth grade and was just like, oh, all right. <laughs> there goes that dream. I'll just set picks for the next four years. <laughs> just box out hard as hell. Hey, you ever see an old lady fall? Like my grandma fell, she was trying to get the hose from behind her house and she fell behind a bush. Should I act it out? Like, a, <laughs> if you want. But it looked like the wild, the, uh, well, this is gonna distract me, I think. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> now that you're doing it, I was like, it looked like a, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, she fell and then her feet were just sticking out from a bush. And she laid there for like two hours. It was the summer. Whoa, wait, she, <laughs> She was Wizard hot. of Oz did? Where she was no, just... like just her feet were sticking out from under a bush in her backyard. Oh, And then wow. a neighbor's kid found her. Which is very funny. Because if you don't have life alert and you're old, you just have to yell. <laughs> but it's very faint if <laughs> you're, you're older. There, be like, Help! <laughs> Isn't that funny? <laughs> you guys don't think it's funny to have to lay there? I don't know if you know this. The war in the Middle East is just on the internet. The whole fucking thing. Every dude out there on both sides was wearing GoPros the entire time. <laughs> Like you can watch it. We watched like three hours of the war in Iraq. And after the first hour, I found myself starting to cheer. Not cheer, but like. <laughs> relate. I felt like I could relate more to the monkey bars guys. You know what I mean? They were a little more my speed. You ever wonder how you would do out there? Watch those guys. Those are just normal fucking dudes. Second shots are fired. There's no game plan. There was no oh, shit. <laughs> Very relatable. Guns jamming. Try to fire a rocket, it goes straight fucking backwards. <laughs> <laughs>
They're very, they look like me trying to fire a gun. Their feet move when they shoot. <laughs> very relatable. They also have never won. They, ne they got fucked up every single time. Bad. They would blow up like one truck every five months. They'd be just as surprised as everybody. <laughs> Shit finally worked out. You could hear it in their voice. Someone would blow up, they'd be like, Oh! Yeah, dude, that's a human reaction. That's relatable. That's what I would do if I saw a fucking explosion. I'd go, oh! <laughs> that's human. You ever watch us kill people? I can't relate to that at all. There's some Black Hawk helicopter with night vision. Mows down like 40 people. Pilot gets on, he just goes, clear. <laughs> <laughs> That was a funny ass joke, bro. It's <laughs> the pilot of the Black Hawk mows down 40 people. Clear. Flies <laughs> off. Yo, that is psychotic. <laughs> Yo, this Shane Gills guy is hilarious, bro. I'm not gonna lie. That was funny. That was that that was that was funny. Definitely some uh <laughs> some risky jokes in there for this time in this day and age. But I like it, you know what I'm saying? I grew up on the Chappelle show. I grew up on, on, on Chris Rock, Eddie Murphy, all that. So I like that type of comedy. I'm not going to lie to you. I think it's hilarious. <laughs> but anywho, I hope you all like this video. What do you think of Shane Gills? Y'all got to let me know in the comments. Is this your type of comedy? Or nah, you're like, nah, this is too much for me. Y'all have to let me know in the comments. And then let me know what you want me to watch and react to next. On Granddad's Clothes. <laughs> We out.